My guest today on my podcast is Robert Truhold, who's the mayor of Quag, and uh, who uh, I ran into at a, uh, an outdoor party the other night at Estes Tetcher's house. And before I begin, I want to mention to you that how I felt there. I, I'm, a, I'm from East Hampton, and it seemed to me, other than when I've gone to parties where everybody's talking to everybody, uh, everybody was talking to everybody except me. And the reason was, they all knew each other. It wasn't like I went to a big party with 50 people and uh, you know, five of them knew another five. It was like all 50 of them knew each other. And uh, it was kind of extraordinary experience. And I, I thought it has to be because there is something very um, uh, special about Quag, I guess would be the right word, or, or, or it's sort of a sheltered place. But what is your take on something like that? Well, it's... It, I... I'm not surprised that you you felt that way because Quag really is a small village. It, it's an incorporated village, but it's I, I I view the word Hamlet as appropriate for Quag, and it's one of the things that attracted uh, my wife Nancy and I to come here over 25 years ago because it's just such a beautiful protected island in in the Hamptons, and it's uh, some people refer to it as the Quiet Hampton. Or, or in any event, uh, what we liked is that people generally seem to be friendly. They know each other. It's a it's an area where you know kids ride their bikes down the streets. It's kind of stepping back in time in a certain way. And you, uh, it's sort of an island feeling. I agree, but it's not an island. It's part of land all around it. Is it isolated physically in some way? Well, no, it's not isolated physically. It, it's unlike some of the other villages, the, the Montauk Highway doesn't go through downtown, which which helps distinguish it. I mean, it, they're, they're, the quag is on, on, on both sides of the highway, but the, the village itself doesn't get as much traffic as a result. So I think that's part of this feeling that we're a little bit protected. We don't have a big commercial center, uh, so there's not a huge amount of traffic that comes into the village to shop. And that helps keep it a little bit quieter using that that word again. Um, How many stores are there on that main street? Well, about about a, a a dozen, I'd say. And but but no supermarkets or major. You know, there's an old fashioned the Quag Market, which has been around for for a hundred years, and uh, so it, it has that old village feeling. It's very quaint um, to use to use an overused word. But we, you know, it's also one of the first, one of the other aspects of Quag. I think it was certainly one of the first, if not the first incorporated village on, on Long Island, at least in Suffolk County, that adopted a zoning code to restrict building. Buildings on, on, on exactly. Quag Street are limited to two, two floors. I don't remember. It was back in the, I think it was in the 50s. And, and that helped preserve like no building on Quag Street can be more than two stories or on Jessup. Um, actually, that's rather late, you know, for uh, incorporation. And you see uh, West Hampton and some of the other towns have bought earlier. I, um, but yeah, it's true. Uh, there's, there's all, the last time I was there was to go to the library. I mentioned that to you when I saw you. And it's a beautiful library. And I've also been there to the, you have a little theater that uh, yeah. has is active all summer. I bet you that must go back over a hundred years. That theater, but you can tell me. Well, the the library goes back over a hundred years, and we just did a major, or the library did a major renovation and expansion that opened just last year. Which, and and so the 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 library is a huge asset of our village, where the number of programs it's hard to keep up because there's so many things every week and weekend going on at the library and. And it's in some ways a community center for us because so much goes on. The theater is is also great. There's a there's the Quag Junior Theater Troupe that has two performances in the summer for um, ages uh, approximately ten up till um, eighteen. And then in the fall and winter, there's the Hampton Theater Company that puts on usually four different performances um, uh, with you know professional actors and, and directors it's a, a fabulous another fabulous benefit we have qjtt is you know 
has been around for almost 40 years or something like that. I'm not sure how long the Hampton Theatre Company has been here, but it's, it's uh, I think, at least 30 years. It's certainly as long as I've been involved. What uh, w- w- you say you brought you, you came out because of the peace and quiet of the place, and that's certainly true. And what uh, was the contrast to you in terms of being busy that you were leaving from? Um, I'm, I'm a recovering attorney, as they say. I was a, a corporate lawyer and in, 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 in New York. And also I l- actually lived in Europe for 20 years, um, running our firm's office in Paris. And, uh, uh, but, but many years ago, I, I grew up in, in, in New York and Manhattan. So came out here on weekends, had friends who had houses. Uh, originally when I was younger, I, I would go out to Amagansett and East Hampton a lot. Um, so I know the, the farther East end, uh, my in-laws had a house in Shelter Island on Ram Island. And so we would go out there in the summers. And when we were looking for a place here, we were actually still living in France. We wanted um, a place that was closer to the city, closer to the airport. And so we were kind of focusing um, on, on Southampton and farther west. And uh, fell upon Quag, where I had some friends from college. I'd come here in the 70s, so I, I knew of Quag. And we just fell in love with it. And we bought an old what's Victorian the, house. What's Sorry? the population of the village? The, the year-round population based upon the 2020 census is 1,662, um, and we, we roughly guesstimate that in the summer that, that triples up to about 5,000, though we don't have an exact count in the summer. But the, the thing of note, and that's one of the challenges that, that we're, we will face in Quag in the years ahead, is the 2010 census had us at, at 960. So the, the population has increased by more than 60%, year-round population increased by more than 60% between the two censuses. And that's been a change in the dynamic. It really used to be much more of a, a summer community, and it still is a summer community. But what do you think the a, change is? What, what's, what's, it, what's it more of now? Well, there, there's just more people out here year-round, which makes it, I, I mean, I think in a, now that I'm out here, uh, uh, you know, rear round, it, it makes it more fun. There's more activity. There, there's more things to do, more people to see. Um, and, uh, but it also makes more demands on the village. You know, we, we could, yeah. in terms of uh, just what, uh, having... What, how long have you, have you been mayor? <laughs> well, not very long. I'm, I'm, I'm just finishing my second month. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm a newbie in, in terms of mayor, but but I was a trustee for two years before then, and, and before that, I served eleven years on the on the zoning board of appeals, and including seven years as a chairman of the zoning board. So I've I've been involved in 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 the village now for you know whatever going on fourteen years. What uh, what what issues uh, did did you see that you felt moved to run to become mayor? Um, well, I, I don't have a, a I don't have a platform of change. And so it's not that I, 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 I came in wanting to shake things up. Um, we, we, Quag benefited from, from a, a very, very competent and, and capable leader in, in Peter Sartorius, my predecessor, um, who served as mayor for, for 13 years. He, uh, he basically, you know, asked me to, if I would consider succeeding, he was, he was ready, he was ready to retire. And I, I took it on as, as a, not, not because I want to change anything, but I, 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 if anything, I want to protect and preserve what we have, but keeping an eye to the future. I mean, you know, as I said a minute ago, Quag has grown. We've faced the same issues that, you know, are faced all, all on the South shore of Long Island, uh, climate change, uh, you know, we're dealing with beach erosion, um, safety issues with, with increased traffic and volume of traffic which you know everybody knows about especially heading farther east but we have more traffic here as well people cutting through quag going down to dune road to 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 head out east um so there's safety issues uh with- there's a, i think the police department in quag is notable among all the police departments for being very protective of the community and uh, particularly of driving too fast in it at I've heard there's been stories about people driving so slow that, um, that, that that's been a problem. And they will, uh, we had, a, I mentioned to you at this, uh, I had a young woman who worked for me who was uh, 
I guess, pulled over on her bicycle. She was about 18 and uh, late at night, and they wanted to know uh, where she was headed and was everything all right. <laughs> and she was just uh, coming home. So that, that must be very, uh, have sort of positives and negatives to it. Well, I, I'd, I'd like to focus on the positives. I, I mean, I think that the uh, one of the one of the interesting uh, people ask me what what have there been surprises, and I, I'd like to say one of the pleasant surprises has been working with our police chief. Um, the Quag Police does have, or certainly had, a reputation of being particularly, uh, you know, difficult. And I I don't think that our police force is difficult. In fact, our chief Isola is is a superstar in my book. Um, and is very focused on safety um, and and protecting Quag and and the residents of Quag. So speed limits are important, and and so I, I don't mind the fact that our police force has a has a reputation of enforcing speed limits. I think that's a good thing. But focusing on safety, I, I, our 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 police chief again has focused very much on on all of our officers. We have fourteen full time officers. 13 of which are EMT trained, and the 14th is a recent hire, and he's about to, to start his EMT training. They are really, really focused on protecting our community um, and doing what everything they can to make sure we feel safe. I had mentioned to you when we, when we met about uh, some of the houses in West Hampton that have uh, what it turns out are attached windmills because without their blades, you wouldn't know it just looks like towers but uh that's they they used to be windmills and they were built because they uh needed to uh raise water up to a high point so you could get water pressure and it was they were windmills that were built in the 1880s and 1890s when the social set of new york began coming out here when the railroad came through whereas the other windmills which are further east in the whole area as you know is famous for them were all built almost a hundred years earlier when they were done, done that for uh, rain and stuff. And I wondered if there are any surprises, pleasant surprises in Quag that turn out to be windmills. There, we don't, not to my knowledge, there's only one house I'm aware that has a, has a windmill attached, but it's actually a modern uh, reproduction of a, of a windmill. The, um, you know, we, even though Quag was founded and established in 1659, um, it was basically grazing land for many, many years. And it was only in the boarding house era in the late 1800s when the, when the railroad came, came east, uh, the Quag began to, you know, was put on the map really as, as a summer destination. So I'm not aware of any hidden wind, windmills that we're gonna, re, you know, need to restore, which is unfortunate we don't have, have the benefit of that, but we do have a lot of beautiful old homes um, that were built during that era in the late 1800s, most of which have, have still survive and, and have been renovated and uh, makes driving down Quag Street, which is our main drive, just beautiful because the, the houses are quite, quite, quite exceptional. Are there uh, any former residents of the village that uh, might be uh, inventors or presidents or uh, wealthy local leaders and or people might know the names of from history? Well, not, not that many. I mean, we have a famous Admiral, Admiral Mahan, who is one of the most famous naval historians who, who built a huge house out here. We don't know how so, so many famous residents or citizens, but we had a lot of famous visitors over the years. Thomas Edison spent a lot of time here um, during the, the, the 60s and 70s. Uh, 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 Elizabeth Taylor used to summer out here and there, were, you know, the uh, one of our, uh, so, so the answer is not so much, but we've had a lot of famous people come and go over the years because uh, it's such a beautiful place to spend a summer. Has there, has there been a lot of building in the last 10 years? There has been certainly a lot in uh, the rest of the Hamptons. A absolutely a huge amount. And, and during, even, even during COVID, there was just a, 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 a there's certain streets that have been largely transformed. Again, you know, that, that's one complaint is that we've had too much construction, but there, but it's all within our zoning code. And, you know, there's, we have limitations on the size of houses and, and setbacks and all of that. But 
absolutely, that's that's contributing to the growth in the population here, both year round and in the summer. So, um, um, but yes, there's not a lot of unbuilt land left in Guag, unfortunately. Is there a, a problem with help finding people who could live in the area that come to work in Quag, or is Quag uh, by itself surrounded by people like that who have places to go? Well, the, I mean, the, 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 I mean, there, there is. We, we suffer here just as in other Hamptons of affordable housing. The cost of living out here has just gotten very high, and 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 so getting getting workers is hard. I mean, it, it's just hard all over to, 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 to get local staffing. Quag does benefit being farther west so that um, we are able to you know, get workers who can commute from points in, in Nassau or in, in, in western Suffolk County. And the commute is not as bad as, as trying to get out to Southampton or East Hampton because we don't, they don't, the traffic doesn't really start on, on 27 until, until usually Hampton Bays. So the answer is yes, we, we, we have the same issues that other communities have, but uh, not quite as bad, I think. Um, how, how long have you, have, have you been living here year round? I presume you had, do you keep a place in New York or are you here? Yeah, we, we still, our, our daughter lives in New York, so we still have a place there, but I, I really only have been full-time year round the last couple of years. Before then, I was still working in the city and, and spending part time. But um, so, but but now I'm, I'm I'm retired from my prior activities and 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 very happy to call call Quag my my year round residence. Um, do you see anything that you want to work on that that the not I mean maybe it's even in the realm of preservation that needs to be taken that dealt with and taken care of better than it has been. I don't want to say better than it has been, because as I said before, I think the village is in, in, in good shape, both financially and, and the physical plan. Um, you know, I'm continue. I, I, I do care a lot about safety. So, you know, I'm continuing to look at speed limits, as you may have seen the, uh, the governor signed into law recently, a, a new law that, uh, that authorizes villages to, to, to lower the speed limit, um, uh, local speed limits down to 25 miles per hour. So that's something that the, the, the village trustees are, are going to be looking at, whether any of our additional streets should, we should lower the speed limit. Um, every year we, we look at, you know, we do some road improvement. We look at, you know, whether stop signs need to be added or whatever. I mean, it's, it's little stuff. In terms of big issues, we, we just, you know, coming up, as I'm sure you're aware, is the Fire Island in Montauk Point beach nourishment um, project. Yeah. Uh, what we organized yesterday in the village uh, an informational meeting for for everybody, and and invited representatives from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, from New York uh, DEC, from the town of Southampton, uh, to make a presentation. That's going to be a big project for our village, and frankly, for the 83 miles of of the uh, you know ocean front from Fire Island to Montauk. Uh, that's going to be. Was it all postponed? I know parts of it were. Well, it's been it's been it's been in the works for 20 years or more. Uh, the Fire Island Inlet um, portion is largely complete now. That started, and they um, went out to bid today, if I understand correctly, on the uh, the dredging project for Shinnecock Inlet and the and the the, the beach uh, the the sand movement from from east of Shinnecock to west of Shinnecock Inlet. Uh, I mean, it's all very technical. The, my my understanding is the third contract, which is the Part that that affects um, our village is going to be next fall winter the uh, 23 24 so it, it's moving ahead perhaps a little bit slowly but but it is moving ahead do you tend to I, I, do you, I I've been people I've talked to it say it, when you go to quag you kind of stay there have you found that to be the case stay there means in terms of not Heading out to, to to Southampton for dinner, or stay here, meaning never leave again. <laughs> <laughs> Either one. I mean, to go to, I, go to I, be busy, it must be quite a shock to go places. It's like Shelter Island in that sense. Yeah, it, it's a it's a fair question. I mean, I think in the summer, there's enough going on here um, between social life and and you know dinner parties and 
and beach parties and all that, that you really don't have any need to, to leave and, or desire necessarily. And, and, you know, the traffic has gotten to be so bad that, you know, it's, we're, we're, we're blessed with enough to do and, and lots of good people and friendly people to do it with. Yeah. Uh, I'd say in, in the off season, when the traffic lightens up and, and, and there are fewer people around then then, yeah, we, you know, we, I, we'll go to West Hampton or out to Southampton. And, you know, I, 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 there's so many, there's so many things to do in all of the Hamptons, but in the summertime, people do have a tendency of staying put. Are there any, uh, do you sell, do you have fireworks in Pong for the fourth? We, uh, we did this past year. It's not every year. It's in, and it's the village has only, to my knowledge, the village itself only hosted fireworks when we celebrated our 350th anniversary. Uh, we, we, we may well do that when we celebrate our centennial as an incorporated village, uh, which will be not that far off. It will be in 2028. We'll be celebrating our centennial, but some of the, some, some looking ahead, but some of the, you know, the, some of their clubs like, you know, uh, the field club hosts, has fireworks. Sometimes uh, private people host fireworks. West Hampton has a big fireworks celebration on the fourth, which we can see from here happily. So is uh, you? I think you did. You just mention that last year you did have fireworks. No, no. Um, we we did not. The, the last time that I'm aware that the village uh, had our own fireworks was about. Uh, it's in was in 2009 when we celebrated our three our 350th year of uh, of existence. Is there was there ever a time capsule buried, as far as you know? I do not know. It's a good question. I I, I will look into that. Um, and uh, what did I know? Thomas Edison was active in Riverhead, and also, and I'm not sure where he built. Was it was an iron ore factory he built on the beach. But I'm trying to. I don't know where that was. I Why think that may have been that may have been in Quag. I I, that, I I know he was a summer. He summered in Quag for several years. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know exactly what he did, but I, I remember reading about that. And I don't know if that was in Quag or West Hampton, but it may well have been in Quag. Yeah, he had come to the community. He had seen the iron that was on the beaches, mm -hmm. which wash up every once in a while. And you see these this very dark layer. I, so he built a little factory that was open to mine it with uh, scoopers and, and people working at it. And, the tide, the tide went out and it never came back with the iron, so it never did it. <laughs> I remember thing, reading that. And of course, the other thing he did, and you probably know about this, is up in Riverhead, is he was showing talking motion pictures. Sure. Uh, which um, would go out of sync partway through, so it never was commercially successful. But he was trying. He would try to manage so many things. He'd certainly one of the most interesting people we've ever had in America. Um, well, I'm glad to talk to you. I think we've run through the time. Um, and uh, I want to thank you for taking the time to talk to me out of your busy schedule. <laughs> well, to be I, that. well, Dan, I appreciate the opportunity to, to speak with and, you. I enjoyed uh, meeting you the other night and, and uh, look forward to keeping up a dialogue. But thank you for the opportunity. Sure. I'm talking to Robert Truhold, Mayor of Quag. Thanks for being on. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Have a great day. You too.